Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes Reacts. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are the Office Blokes. Yeah. We are. We have a Patreon page, don't we, Mike? We do indeed. Uh, go and laugh look at patreon.com, uh, put in Office Blokes Reacts. .com. Dot com and you will find us there. I've uh, got loads of tiers starting at just one pound fifty. Got block content, uh, early access things. I've like got a load of keen peel up there at the moment, haven't we? That have been blocked. Yeah, blocked. yeah. yeah. Uh, so if you fancy supporting the channel, it'd be absolutely amazing. Do uh, it. Love it if you did. Uh, so go down there and check it out. Yeah, uh, Viacom have decided that we uh, they don't want us doing Key and Peele reactions on YouTube anymore. It seems like Rude. so. Uh, so there, there's wow. loads on Patreon and even yeah. more to come. Because we're still going to do the odd key and peel, even if they get yeah. blocked, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. we still do. Of course. So, Love uh, it. loads on Patreon. But speaking of Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, yeah, uh, we've got a Patreon uh, request here. This is for Darcy. Cheers, Darcy. Cheers, Darcy. Thanks very much. Uh, who owns Manchester United? Uh, meet the Glazers. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell, Darcy. <laughs> Have you had any back and forth with Darcy about this? Like, is do we know, is she a United fan? Is she like. She's she. I presume Darcy, that's a girl's name. My mate's it? called Darcy and he's a guy. Really? Mm. First it's... name's Simon, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Darcy. Right, yeah. Maybe it's Simon. <laughs> yeah, it could be. I'm just wondering if this is loaded, if it's like an anti-United thing or... I, or, I don't it, think she's keen on City, put it that way. Oh, really? No, I don't think so. Right, so well. I'm not sure what, what team she <laughs> actually supports. So I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. But well, yeah, the, the, the Glazers are very... I've, I've got a lot to say about the Glazers. I like them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the pause where we are now. They own lots of empty malls, don't they, in America? Stretford. <laughs> Stretford. <laughs> no, but that, I think that's that's one of the things, isn't it? The, the tax relief from empty malls with oh, no yeah. shops in or something. There's, I heard something about that, but we'll get into it. Yeah. Who owns Manchester United? Meet the Glazers. Let's do it. <laughs> It was one of the biggest off-field stories in years. In 2005, Manchester United, the most successful English football club in the Premier League era, were being sold to American billionaire owners. Even in the age where billionaires had begun to invest in English football with little thought of immediate profit, with everyone playing catch-up to Roman Abramovich and Chelsea, Malcolm Glazer was still an unknown quantity, in the UK at least. Glazer was the patriarch of a business empire that had made hundreds of millions of dollars in a vast array of businesses that initially wouldn't seem to be particularly lucrative. He had grown up in a poor Lithuanian Jewish family in New York. From the age of 15, after the premature death of his father, he would sell watches door to door before building up a successful watchmaking business and then moving into real estate. His first allied corporation owns millions of square feet of mall space across America. There's a range of other businesses from media to old people's homes to fish processing. Glazer was openly spendthrift. According to a 2005 profile in The Guardian, journalist Alan St. John met with Glazer to discuss a potential biography. Glazer pointed at St. John's trousers. Those pants are Hugo Boss pants. They cost $200. My pants? They came from JC Penney. 1995 on sale. And you know something? I like my pants more than he likes his pants. You know why? Because I remember the day when I didn't have $20 to spend on pants. Still, that attitude translated only part... How does he know he likes his pants more than the other guy likes his pants? <laughs> I would have, I would have said comment. to him, I think you like my, my pants, pants a little bit like more. Pants. Why are you Stop even talking about my pants, yeah. you fucking weirdo. Yeah, yeah take them and <laughs> tuck them off. You sit there man-spreading. <laughs> like, yeah. What are you talking about? I would have said, here, have them. <laughs> tuck them off. Tuck me on the pants off. Well... Took me on the pants off as well. <laughs> and shoved me shiny ball sack with its manscapes right on his chin. Discount code off his blokes at the till. <laughs> on, chin. Have it, Glazer. <laughs> I just say, do you want to write a book or not? I think everyone's oh, got their own prerogatives in life. You know, maybe he wears a Rolex. Maybe he drives a really nice car or something. Yeah. And that, that's, that strikes me as someone that's just being awkward for the sake of it a little bit. <laughs> well, they take a lot of money. They must have nice things because a lot of money's going draining from one... Yeah. Everyone, particular division they've got in a sports franchise if you're a billionaire everyone's going to have their thing they like splurge on yeah. aren't they I mean sure I mean it's alright it's fine saying I've got a pair of pants that cost $20 but I mean sure he doesn't live in like a, a run down flat somewhere does he in the middle of Brooklyn or any, anywhere like that he probably lives in like a big posh house somewhere doesn't he mm. so I mean <laughs> in Tampa Florida so get some decent pants as well you might as well you know, it's not proven anything is it that's, that's really rubbed us all up the wrong way I think that's what he's trying to I think that's why he's <laughs> 
I think that's the point of what he's trying to prove is you don't have to spend £200 yeah. on a yeah, pound yeah. But you don't, you, you don't have to punch but we all know Shane, that as well. Yeah, we all know that. You can all <laughs> you go out and buy... To, but, yeah. you, know, you can do if you want. You don't have to live in a £10 million house. You can live in a yeah. you know, yeah. $300 basement rental. But at the same time, you know, if you see a pair of pants that's $200 and you prefer them, you can buy them, yeah. don't you? If you've got the money for it. I just said you've obviously spent $20 on that haircut. I'd do it myself and then take my hat off and I'd like... <laughs> and then did up the hat. Yeah. ...into his business dealings. Famously, he was accused of being a slumlord after it emerged that his holding company charged residents of one trailer park $5 per month for a pet and $3 for any extra resident after the first two. In other words, children. <laughs> but the margins on extracting pet fees in American trailer parks were small beer compared to the world of sports franchise ownership, which elevated Glazer into the public's consciousness and turned him into a billionaire. Despite knowing nothing about American football, Glazer bought the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 1995 for $192 million, which was then a record price for an NFL franchise, and installed three of his sons, Joel, Brian and Edward, to run it. Right few off. thought the Glazers <laughs> had got a good deal, as the Bucks had been on a downward spiral. But soon, the family came across a bright idea. The Bucks needed a new stadium to make the team financially viable, but didn't want to pay the huge costs themselves. So, they made an offer to the city's administration. The Glazers would pay for half, but the public purse would have to cough up for the rest. Otherwise, they'd move the Bucks somewhere else. After a series of compromises were rejected, one city politico came up with a novel idea. The Community Investment Tax. This would be a 30-year, half-cent sales tax that would be used to pay for public infrastructure projects as well as education and law enforcement. It was projected to raise $2.7 billion over three decades, with the construction costs of the new stadium piggybacking on whatever was raised. 6% would go towards building the Buck Stadium. Residents, local activists and politicians were outraged that the country's poorest residents would effectively be paying for a franchise owner's stadium. But when put to the vote, it passed 53% to 47, and in 1998 the Raymond James Stadium was completed. Later, a 103-foot, 43-ton pirate ship, which had a cannon that fires every time a point is scored, was added. In the end, the Glazers put virtually none of their own money in. Today, according to Forbes, the Bucks are worth $981 million. <laughs> wow. Couldn't do that over here. We ever heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't be able to do that over here, would you? As Manchester United. Go to the local city and ask them for what's it. I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, but really, you'd have to change your name, first of all. They yeah. went, to the, went to the banks instead, didn't they, over here? Mm. That's where they got did it. Yeah, but you sit, the, the stadium sits in Salford City. So yeah. it does. you'd have oh, to go right, to yeah. Salford City, not Manchester City. Not Manchester City yeah. Football Club, but Manchester City Council. I'm not sure. What was it mm. Trafford? It comes under the borough of Trafford, but it still comes under yeah. Salford. Ah, uh, right. Mm. right. Salford, Salford City. Salford City, yeah. Ah, uh, right. Okay, yeah. I can see why a lot of people don't like them, though. Moves like that, yeah. where it's like top you're a billionaire. Top guys. Just use, just use your own fucking money. Why, like? In fact, they didn't go to the bank to so think about it. They actually they went to the uh, well, stock, they sort of, stock, stock they sort of sold, did, sold shares, didn't they? Yeah, but they sort of they went to the banks, but they put United up as collateral sort mm, of thing, correct. didn't they? Yeah. That's what they did. Yeah, but, uh, and took the money. Yeah, but it'll explain exactly what they did on it. The super rich sure. really don't use their own money for anything, do oh, no, they? Today, I Everything is just... I, I've had a few people explain it to me, like, why would you pay for that when you can borrow the money and do this and that and it's like I thought that's what people did you just pay for things they, <laughs> make, they make sure they're not personally liable don't yeah, they right. not just the Glazers but I mean all people yeah. in business like this they, they always find a way around it and they're getting, right, they're getting people of, you're uh, looking at Philip Green when you say that people like that but, well, well he anything. is in trouble though isn't he so <laughs> allegedly I didn't say anything about that allegedly <laughs> so <laughs> five times what Glazer paid for it the success of the Bucks made Manchester United an easy idea to sell both Joel and Avram were keen soccer fans and believed that United had a huge international reputation unlike any sports club or franchise in the world, and that they could be picked up relatively cheaply. Rupert Murdoch had had the same epiphany and had already attempted to buy the club for £623.4 million, but the deal was not approved by the Labour government's Monopoly and Mergers Commission due to a potential conflict of interest with Murdoch's football broadcasting business. Didn't know that. As far back as 2003, Glazer had been quietly accumulating shares in Manchester United at the behest of his sons, but it was an argument over a horse that opened the door for a full takeover. 
John Magnier and JP McManus owned close to 29% of Manchester United shares and had invested in a successful racehorse called the Rock of Gibraltar, with then coach Sir Alex Ferguson. When Ferguson fell out with the other owners over stud rights, it poisoned relations in the boardroom. McManus and Magnier wanted out, and the Glazer family were there to pick up the pieces. Despite supporter shareholder activism and the famous green and gold supporter protests, the Glazers Red Football Limited were able to take control of the club and take it private. But they didn't use their own money to buy the club. They used a financial instrument called an LBO, or a leveraged buyout, something they had used many times during the 80s and 90s. Essentially, it involves borrowing money against a future asset to buy that asset. After 75 years of being debt-free, Manchester United were suddenly hundreds of millions of pounds in the red. At one point, the Glazers' interest payments hit £60 million per year, but the Glazers could still pay the huge interest payments because of the club's continued success on the pitch, the booming TV rights deals, as well as rapid exploitation of the club's commercial potential. After the takeover and until his retirement, Ferguson's Manchester United won five more Premier League titles alongside three League Cups, the FIFA Club World Cup, and a second Champions League trophy. In 2016, the club announced that it had become the first English club to earn more than half a billion pounds in revenue in a single financial year, with a record profit of 68 million. They have doubled the revenue over the course of their tenure, massively expanding commercial contracts to cover an official wine partner, official tyre partner, and of course, an official paint partner. In 2014, Malcolm Glazer died after being ill for a long time following a stroke. Joel and Avram are co-chairmen, and his four other children are directors. So how do you assess the Glazer's legacy? On the one hand, it could be argued that the takeover and subsequent rise in value of the club, plus its commercial operation, has made it a huge financial success. It is now, according to Forbes, the most valuable soccer team in the world, worth an estimated $3.689 billion, more even than Real Madrid. With Jose Mourinho at the helm, the team is back challenging for the title and has returned to the Champions League. But at what cost? On the 10th year anniversary of the purchase, the Manchester United Supporters (laughs) Trust released a statement laying out just how much... Any good what you can see in the uh, when you look back on the... when you know what the future holds. I was going to say they're not the richest um, sports franchise... uh, football franchise now, are they? I think they're like third... I don't think it goes yeah. up and it down. Didn't yeah. say so it goes up and down, fluctuates. No all the football, time, that, doesn't it? For English football. Yeah, English yeah. football. Yeah, not, yeah. not a franchise. Not no, this is obviously old because this yeah. is when they're talking about. When did Mourinho go? About three years ago. Uh, it's just. Yeah, it probably was, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, uh, Solskjaer took over from him, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. About three so years ago. About, about three, three years ago now. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a bit annoying, some of this. <laughs> not at all. I mean, they're. they're th- They've made their money without a doubt. Who's do you think there's ever been a conscious idea at United to buy players of a certain nationality to yeah, boost to boost shirt sales oh, with all yeah. the yeah. countries? They all do it. I remember when I was in Korea and I bumped into uh, he was actually the old uh, MD of United, um, uh, Farnan, and uh, he was there for in, in, in capacity for Sunderland, and they were buying a Korean player just for marketing. Yeah, he was a good player, but they were buying him for marketing. I think he was the same guy who ended up at Swansea. Yeah, all oh, right. Okay, I've heard people say it over the years, like when when Park was signed, then uh, shirt sales in Korea went mm. through the roof. Yeah. And but he, been... he was a really good player. He's oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's not just Park, like, yeah, it's like, Don't get me wrong. The guy, the guy, some of them were buying was a good player. Yeah, he yeah. just wasn't. You know, he's not. You're buying him because you fill in a position. So why not take yeah. a good Korean player? As opposed to the same equivalent Scottish player, for example. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, might as well yeah. take Korean because you're going to get mark- the marketing yeah. you're going to get yeah, from take it. Chicharito you know, with Mexicans. It's massive, yeah. yeah, yeah it's massive. take a bit of a chance. We, bought we did it with China with Sun. I think we had mm. one called, I think we had a striker called Dong. I can't remember. I think he actually scored a goal for us as well, but never worked out. But he's Chinese. And did they ever play think, with Chong? I don't know. <laughs> but I think that was one of those where they think. You know, if he does make it, you know, it'd be great for like the you know Far East and well, you know, the Chinese first one, yeah. market. Yeah. It'd be huge. the first one but, now um, you know. who's playing for Spurs now? Who's the uh, the first a- Asian uh, Indian Asian uh, to play for in the Premier League? And he's I think he's of Indian. I think he's English, but he's yeah. of Indian descent. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he's playing for Spurs. He got he, play, he played the first team the other day against Vitesse Arnhem in the uh, yeah, yeah. that Champions Cup. Where he's so called, by yeah. by that logic, if you've got like an Indian descent. Mm football player you're cracking a huge market for shirt sales yeah, big time. Like sure, yeah. 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 
I think well, teams like United are already very big in India, though. Of course they are. They? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. But again, when when you get the foreign support, it becomes a bit bit fickle because they they tend to follow the success. So you know, United yeah, had definitely. so much success in the nineties and two thousands. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the yeah. overseas support that was when it was generating big worldwide audiences with yeah. the new the new TV deals and all that. So United were getting a lot of that support, and Liverpool had it prior to that. Yeah. yeah. And then they move. I've seen people now. You know, what I'm saying I'm not supporting Chelsea anymore. And I'm going to be a City fan, or I'm not supporting City anymore. I'm going to be a Liverpool. Especially fan. abroad, like yeah, they, they, they move the Middle yeah. East. I mean, yeah. it's really fickle over there as you yeah, like say yeah. they same in Africa but, you look at Africa you get an African player Algeria you know we get m- mad Algerian fans because we've got Riyad Mahrez oh. yeah cool I bet yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Get loads of them at the game oh, yeah. see loads carrying the Algerian flag mm. interesting so it's definitely a, definitely a, a move to do yeah. yeah I think so much money had been taken out of the club not investing a single penny might be considered an ownership crime by fans at most clubs but far worse than that They've actually extracted colossal sums from Manchester United, they wrote in 2015. When all interest and charges on their leveraged buyout is added up, plus money they've paid themselves, plus related debt still on the club, they've taken more than £1 billion and it's still rising. No owner in the history of football in any country ever has taken so much money from a club. Yeah, it's amazing when you look at yeah. how many countries weren't in debt only a century ago, and now it's the complete norm that every country has this ridiculous deficit and owes mm. so much money. Yeah, seems to be a a, a, a move, doesn't it? And it's mm. in business as well as yep. Yep. nationalities and stuff. I mean, a lot of people. I mean, I'm, I'm no fan of the Glazers, but a lot of people think that, that they're just clever people. Mm. You know, they're buying out the club there, not using their own money, but it's still making money. Yeah. You know, they bought it for like five, six hundred million something like that well they didn't but it's worth it. like between whatever probably between two and three billion they could yeah. sell it tomorrow they could probably make like two billion from it so but the, why, the, would, they, why would they why would they have taken a billion out yeah. I don't know a lot of money out and of they've it. not even paid a penny for it because yeah. they bought it with its yeah. own yeah. its own yeah. assets I mean, to be fair though when it, before they bought it there were shares available and obviously you just do get yeah. share dividends so you still get money going out the club I think yeah. you find won't you you yeah. know even when you're paying dividends to shareholders so you know we still got money going out of the club but that's if they pay the dividends yeah 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 but a lot of clubs don't yeah still ah oh, right okay mm. but yeah it's absolutely not ideal ideally you have to like the Brownvich or the guys at City mm. where they just pay for everything or everything's paid for they don't take money out of the club but mm. it's we are where we are at the moment with it you know what can you do to try demonstrations try and get them out of the club try and get them to sell but I think one day someone will come up with the money and they probably will sell but uh, I don't know Hmm. Uh, it's not yeah. ideal yeah. at all. They'll only do it if it's in their interests. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If someone offers, yeah. listen, it's all about money, isn't it? With them, simple as that. They're if someone offers them enough money, then they try to buy an IPL league, uh, IPL uh, team. All um, oh, right. I don't know if it's called IPL in the, but it's the Indian yeah, Premier, Premier League. league. Yeah, 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 but I'm not sure so. it's called IPL. With cricket's IPL, isn't it? I don't Indian know. Premier League cricket. I don't uh, know if it's okay. Indian Premier League football as well. I don't know, but it's, but they tried to buy a team there, but they got outbid. It was, I think it was a silent bid. And I think they got outbid by someone else, and they didn't. They ended up with no team. Oh, right, so okay. everyone's got a team, sort of like who were buying them, and there's no teams yeah. left, and they they had to do they without. Missed out. Yeah, oh, right, okay. Yeah. For being a bit frugal with the money, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> they went in on the cheap, thinking they were going to get it, and they didn't. I, uh, yeah. yeah, well, so. I mean, they've obviously done something early on. They've been kind of pioneers of it mm. when they bought United, and now a lot of investment conglomerates and that mm. sort of stuff are looking at what they're doing, going, oh, big time. We mm. can make of billions so. if we buy that team." Mm. So yeah, they're, they're, a massive they're not the massive, only players in yeah, the game using are someone else's money. Yeah. Yeah. The massive commercial but, juggernauts. All sports franchises like that. Of course, yeah, they're yeah, across the world. Any, you, know, you go to any country and it's a massive commercial yeah, yeah. franchise. I wonder if That's I can. Money. Wonder if I can get a new car with someone else's money. Like if I can borrow <laughs> against <laughs> the car. You can the banks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then I still have to pay the bank yeah, back. How do, can yeah. I make it yeah. so the bank pay themselves back for my new car? <laughs> Buy a car that's going to get equity. Something that appreciates. Yeah. Yeah. And then borrow against the appreciation. Yeah. Just right. Get Joel Glazer to do it for get you. A rare car. Out. Yeah, getting a Ferrari, yeah, like yeah. a really, really rare one, <laughs> and then crash it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. interesting. Thanks for that, Darcy. Mm, cheers. cheers. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it too. Don't forget like and subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Nice one.